We've been covering the FTC, Xbox, uh, PlayStation, Nintendo, all this Activision Blizzard acquisition stuff, Activision Blizzard King stuff for a while. And we all know that, yes, it does look like the sale is going through. It might even be finalized at some point today. And when it is, we are going to get Call of Duty on future Nintendo platforms beginning in 2024 with an in-development switch. This is according to court documents, by the way, saying that it's going to begin on an in-development switch coming out next year. So take that for what you will. I don't know if Microsoft actually knows it's coming out next year, but that's what the legally says. And it's going to start then and going to last for 10 years. So that's really cool and something that we already knew. But it turns out uh, that some new details have come up about the Nintendo and Xbox contract. And this ain't just about Call of Duty anymore. Oh, no, no, no. This deal is so good for Nintendo fans that you're not going to believe the terms. And also, why those terms came up. Because Sony signed a 10-year agreement over the weekend specifically for Call of Duty to come to PlayStation. And it led to people digging into the exact contract between Nintendo and Microsoft. And oh boy, guys, we're getting everything. I kid you not. We're getting everything. Now, before I dive deeper into this, a few things I want to point out. One, Stop getting mad at me because there's an Xbox logo in my background. In fact, because people got mad about it, psh, look, now you see a PlayStation logo. Oh, look, now you see my Nintendo Switch back there as well, even though it's usually right here in the dock. Guys, I, I enjoy all of gaming. There's a PlayStation 5 directly behind me as well. Like I enjoy all aspects of gaming, not just Nintendo. I just happen to prefer Nintendo over the rest, so I spend a lot more time playing Nintendo games than I do other things, including third-party games. But guys, this is a story we need to dive into, and we need to dive into it right about now. So I'm getting this over at Xbooter, a very good website when it comes to stories like this. And it says, Nintendo's 10-year deal with Microsoft covers all future Activision Blizzard games. Read that headline again. We're not just talking Call of Duty. We're talking Diablo. We're talking Warcraft. We're talking if there's a new StarCraft game that comes out. We're talking Spyro. We're talking Crash. Anything Activision Blizzard makes, all future Activision Blizzard games have to come to Nintendo again beginning next year. <laughs> oh, this deal just became so good for us. But let's let, let's go beyond the headline because Sony's deal looks pretty raw in comparison and Sony's probably got no one to blame but themselves. Scrolling down here, here are the highlights from the story. Uh, Nintendo's 10-year deal with, uh, sorry, Microsoft's 10-year deal with Nintendo includes Call of Duty and all other Activision content after the merger closes. This tidbit was stated in the documents published by the U.S. District Court, who, yes, if you're wondering, like, oh, how did we get our hands on the contract? We don't have our hands on the contract. The ones that do are the U.S. District Court because the contract was submitted to them in evidentiary findings. So evidence, right? They, they want to say, hey, we signed this contract. We're bringing games to more gamers. They needed the contract as proof. And so this little detail about the contract came out. It ain't just about Call of Duty, everyone. That's what the headline said. That's what Phil Spencer talked about. Actually, Nintendo got this contract to be for everything. All right. The deal is quite different from Sony's, which will only receive Call of Duty content for the next 10 years. Sony was also offered the same deal as Nintendo back in January of 2022, but it declined it. That's right. Sony could have had all Activision Blizzard games, all of them for the next 10 years. Sony declined it. And then after, after they won the injunction, you know, after, after the, the injunction didn't go through, Microsoft's new deal presented to them was worse. So everyone talking about how, oh, Jim Ryan played him and blah, blah, blah. No, Jim Ryan cost his consumers games. That's just straight up. There's no guarantee future Activision Blizzard games beyond Call of Duty go to their platform. But it's going to Nintendo. Pretty, pretty interesting here. Nintendo may get many Activision games after the merger closes. It closes, and this includes titles like Overwatch. We have Overwatch 2 out right now. Diablo, Diablo 4 recently released. 
possibly World of Warcraft, which would be, damn, bringing that to Switch? What? I mean, well, you could run a little bit on a potato, but cool. Uh, and like the Switch and subsequent consoles. So they just mentioned Switch because that's the only system out right now. Although we know from court documents that Call of Duty won't first appear until 2024 for an in-development device. I presume all of these games will appear for an in-development device. This just made third-party support of Switch massively increase from one of the major former third-party companies. Pretty crazy that Microsoft acquiring them actually helped out Nintendo that much. That's insane. Uh, Microsoft loves Nintendo. Of course, they gave the same contract to Sony. So what are you going to do? Um, Microsoft recently claimed it is committed to bring Call of Duty titles on an in-development Switch model. It seemed to confirm the existence of multiple consoles in development. Earlier this year, Microsoft and Nintendo closed the deal to bring Call of Duty entries on the Switch and the next console after the merger eventually locks. It seems like there is much more to the contract than most gamers initially thought. The giant company is planning to also bring other Activision Blizzard, by the way, the name of the company is officially Activision Blizzard King. Just, just to be clear. Anyways, uh, on the Nintendo consoles, which is far different than the deal Sony signed some time ago to keep Call of Duty titles on the platform. Microsoft stated that it is contractually obligated to release all future Activision Blizzard titles on the Nintendo platforms. The conglomerate reiterated its contract with Nintendo in the recently published documents by the U.S. District Court from the trials against the Federal Trade Commission. As per an aforesaid deal between the companies, Nintendo will receive a wide variety of Activision Blizzard content in the future, unlike Sony. Here's a quote. Nintendo has a contractual right to obtain Activision content post-merger, including Call of Duty. So Call of Duty is part of it, but not just Call of Duty. And it's all in the pages from uh, pages of the documents from pages 74 to 120. It has been widely believed in the past Nintendo would only get Call of Duty entries in the future, like Sony. But the contract between the two companies goes much deeper than that. In fact, Sony was offered the same proposal back in January 2022 for all Activision Blizzard content, but the deal did not proceed. This is a long time ago, by the way. Like This is over a year ago. Uh, anyways, additionally, Microsoft only recently claimed it's committed to bringing Call of Duty games on an in-development Switch model. Again, this came out during the, the court case findings, hitting two birds with one stone. The conglomerate also said that Nintendo could release the Switch successor as early as next year. As per the vague wording in the official documents, there seem to be multiple Nintendo consoles in the brewer, and Microsoft is bringing Call of Duty to at least two of them. Here's a quote. Xbox has also contractually agreed to provide versions of Call of Duty to Nintendo for its Switch console and upcoming console upgrade. Again, this is from the contract. So even though Call of Duty might not come to Switch or, you know, an in-development Switch until next year, it's still going to come to Switch. So basically, the next gen and the current gen are both going to get a Call of Duty next year, is, is essentially what the contract is saying. In the FTC trial, Nintendo was not considered to be an equal competitor to Sony and Microsoft. This is according to the FTC. But Judge Jacqueline Scott Corley and Phil Spencer highly disagreed with that notion. An assortment of Activision titles will further diminish the argument because more third-party content will be on the platform. It is clear that Nintendo fans will be eating well for the next 10 years. Popular Activision titles such as Overwatch, Diablo, World of Warcraft, and The Sword, including for future content that could come out on Nintendo Switch or subsequent consoles in the future. This is massive. This is huge. This is the W us Switch owners have been wanting from third-party companies for so long. A commitment to bring everything. If only we can get Ubisoft to sign such an agreement with Nintendo. But you know what the funny thing is? What's going to happen when we get all of the Activision Blizzard content in the future coming to that next generation device is it will encourage other companies such as EA who recently finally gave us the current version of their football game FC 
2024 is actually going to be the current updated version with all the recent releases. They haven't done that pretty much the entirety of the Nintendo Switch's existence. And now we're going to get the fully updated full game coming from EA. Why? Well, maybe they know about the next system coming and they want to bring bigger and better support to it. Now you have this agreement in place that's going to bring even more third-party games to Switch. Not less, more. This wasn't just Call of Duty. We feared, oh, it would be Call of Duty, but they would keep Crash and Spiral exclusive. <laughs> nope. Guess what? Microsoft ain't keeping anything from Activision Blizzard exclusive for the next 10 years because it's all coming to Nintendo. I can't... I can't even fathom this right now. It's all coming to a Nintendo system. You want to talk about Microsoft loving Nintendo? Nintendo wasn't getting most of these games. We had Overwatch. Like, we weren't getting a majority of these games. Now we're going to get all of them. And probably getting most of them day and date. Some of them a bit later. Like, if we get Diablo 4, I would say it's going to release later than Diablo 4 right now because it's already out. I, guys... This is incredible. This will help convince Ubisoft. This will help convince, you know, Take Two to bring more than NBA 2K over. Guys, this is exactly what we've been wanting as Switch owners when it comes to third parties. Commitments. It sounds like Nintendo's next system is not only going to be heavily boosted by Nintendo's own offerings, right? We're going to Get some incredible offerings from Nintendo. We already have support from games like Mortal Kombat 1 coming up, Hogwarts Legacy. It looks like the support's only going to ramp up even further on that next device. If you want to ensure, if you want to make something different about this next device, one thing Nintendo can now promise to their investors and promise to Nintendo owners with that next platform is not only will you continue to get the utterly incredible Nintendo software, but now they have full commitment of major third-party support from one of the formerly biggest third-party companies out there now, technically not third-party. Although they're still behaving like third-party for Nintendo for the next 10 years. Damn. Just, what else can you say other than, damn! That is awesome. So, uh, shout out to uh, Phil Spencer and... Uh, Nintendo, you know, we got Shintaro Furukawa signing this deal. What an incredible deal for Nintendo. Uh, if you're a Nintendo fan and you've been wanting to play these major games on Nintendo's next system, or maybe even some of them on the current, you got to be happy as well, because this is obviously a win for you. Right now, it really seems like the only people that are going to be upset about this whole FTC and the whole merger stuff happening are one, people who are anti-merger in general, I uh, even though the company was going to merge with somebody regardless, whatever, your anti-merger in general. Uh, Sony fans who are probably not only upset uh, that this deal went through because Sony was fighting it so vehemently, but now that their 10-year deal looks like garbage compared to Nintendo's, can't believe that Jim Ryan wouldn't try to try to get the old deal back. Instead, they're just, you know, whatever with this deal. And beyond all of that, obviously people worried that Microsoft, after these deals expire, uh, will just suddenly stop this and make it all exclusive, right? Like, that's that's the big fear is after 10 years, will they make this all exclusive? Well, that's a distinct possibility. I would say if things are getting really successful, and I've, I've said this about Switch the whole time too, third-party companies could make a lot of money on Switch if they show consistent support. So if you bring your yearly Call of Duty, if you brought your Assassin's Creed brand new games every time, when you show that consistent support, you will build an audience over time. And what's nice with this 10-year commitment is that is building an audience over time. And I got a feeling especially between Nintendo and Microsoft, that there's going to be a new deal signed as we start approaching the end of the current. Uh, this is incredible. I'm, this is just, uh, wow. This is the biggest news of the year. I mean, besides games coming out, you know, like Tears of the Kingdom, we got Pikmin 4 later this week. But besides actual game releases, this is literally the biggest news for Nintendo Switch. Damn. I'll catch you guys in the next video.